I really appreciate it, um, you know, getting this fellowship because then now I just have a moment to really immerse myself in, uh, in my research. I'm happy to have a year off where I really think seriously, where I get to do the field work and also start the writing process. I was looking for a community, uh, you know, uh, a community of people who understand the challenges in the, in the discipline. And I think I have, I have found people whose, whose relationships I'll carry outside of this workshop where you can bounce ideas. Uh, and that's really what I was looking for. And, and the whole idea that, you know, we're all working and we're all trying to do this research. Uh, my name is Sipagazi Magaza. Um, from South Africa in the Eastern Cape. I come from a very small town. I now work at Rhodes University in Grahamstown. I have been working there since 2011. My PhD is on the role of the South African government in assisting uh, women who were in the guerrilla movement. I began to understand the debates around disarmament, demobilization and reintegration and what uh, mostly men do after wars. Um, I mean, it's quite an exciting um, debate in Africa, especially because of the civil wars that we see in the 1990s, the depressing picture, um, the dep you know, often depressing lives um, of, of men and women um, in, the, in the aftermath of liberation. But we know actually of the men, I th we know quite well, um, because in a way um, there's evidence of South African, including the black and the white men being involved in private security as mercenaries in different wars in the continent, in Equatorial Guinea, in Sierra Leone, including Iraq for that matter. So we know that. But what I didn't see, what I didn't hear, um, was what the women did after, in the aftermath of liberation, who were with their men in the battlefront, if you wish. And so that's how I ended up looking at the, the lives of female ex-combatants. Of course, that's also a misunderstanding of what kind of wars were being waged because actually very few of the men, um, even in South Africa, in the African National Congress, actually came uh, face to face with the apartheid army. It just didn't happen. And so it was a different kind of war that relied mostly on intelligence, which most women could do because they could sneak in into South Africa without being uh, noticed or being a threat, actually. So most of that work. Um, uh, was carried through uh, um, by, by a lot of women. I want to do two interviews with each, with each woman from the moment of birth up until uh, um, their military lives, the moment they decided uh, to join a political life and why in particular they wanted to go into combat, right? And then the second phase of the interview is looking um, at their civilian lives and how their military training then shapes how they um, interact with their families, uh, with their communities. What war does is to dis destabilize gender relations. And so women come into the public sphere, um, including combat, right? But somehow um, the, 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 the aftermath forces women to go back into the private space. A lot of uh, political careers for, 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 for men are built on their uh, having participated in the war for women often, um, the pressure is for them to silence that memory. The nationalist project you know, takes over uh, uh, the gender transformation project, even when women had participated with their men during liberation. Somehow, something doesn't happen in the aftermath.